everyone welcome to noonday prayer and look who's with us today i'm here yay <laughs> genevieve is here and was here on sunday for those of you who got to see her on sunday what a great day it was it was baptisms a, yeah it was a beautiful day and great to celebrate with having our new lifted restrictions mm -hmm. and Genevieve able to come and the Holy Spirit being there and blowing lots yeah, and lots what a of win. wind around. <laughs> uh, so um, Genevieve is joining us for Noonday Prayer today and we'll begin on page 103. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. All right. Our psalm is Psalm 119, verses 25 through 32. And if you're in your prayer book, that's on page 765. My soul cleaves to the dust. Give me life according to your word. I have confessed my ways, and you answered me. Instruct me in your statutes. Make me understand the way of your commandments, that I may meditate on your marvelous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Take me from the way of the living, of the lying. Let me find grace through your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set your judg judgments before me. I hold fast to your decrees. O oh Lord, let me not be put to shame. I will run the way of your commandments. For you have set my heart at liberty. Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today, we're going to continue with Luke in chapter 15. Um, and the next story that we hear after all of the lost things and rejoicing at finding them is the story of the prodigal son. So that's what we'll talk about today, but because the story itself is so long to read, um, just going to remind you of what it is and then talk a little bit about it. So um, the the story starts, starts off on verse 11. Um, let's see, am I right about that? Yeah. Yes. So, um, 
starts off on verse 11 talking about this man who has two sons and we have the older son who is good and faithful mm -hmm. and does all of his work and stays and supports his father and the younger son who wants to do his own thing mm -hmm. he wants to be his own person and he asks for his inheritance early and his father being loving and trusting gives it to him and so the younger son goes off and we hear squanders it mm -hmm. to the point where he has absolutely nothing left and he is um, like envious of the food that pigs are eating yes and we know the relationship that the Jewish people have with pigs so we know this isn't even this isn't even him mm -hmm. needing to spend his time with animals it's the the uncleanliness of all animals that he is with he is lower than low Meanwhile, the older son is with his father, continuing to work the land and to take care of everything. And it's at this point in time that the younger son says, this is no life. I can't live like this. Yeah, I'd live better at my father's house. Right. Yeah. And so he goes back and he says, you know, maybe if my father, if I come back and I tell my father, he can treat me like one of his servants. Like I can live even as my father's servant who has it better. It would be better than what I have now. Right. Yeah. So that's what he does. But he doesn't even get the chance. He doesn't get the chance to say sorry or to say anything before his father is running to him and embracing him and welcoming him home and then wants to kill the fatted calf, mm -hmm. which... Um, Getting him clothes, putting a ring on. Is that in right. Oh, I might I not think, be... No, I think you're right. He gets all of this stuff... Um, and uh, and they kill the fatted calf, which is like this most special, sacred animal that's saved for the best of best occasions. And um, and so the older brother, who is still working the fields at this point in time, doesn't even know what's going on either. Has no idea that his brother is home until a servant comes to tell him. Not even his father, but a servant comes to say, "Hey." You know, your brother's home and we're having a party and the whole village is invited and you should come celebrate. And he is so angry because he has worked and toiled and and just shown his devotion this whole time and has never received a fatted calf for his own self or mm -hmm. his friends. And and so he gets so angry and his father comes out mm -hmm. and he says to him, he says, son, you're always with me. Everything that I have is yours. But we have to celebrate because your brother was lost and now he's found and he's home. And we have to rejoice that he's back and with us. And it's with this, these loving words that our story ends. Yeah. So I know um, this has never been one of my favorite verses as the oldest Yes. child. Me too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As an older sibling, I never liked this because I thought, man, I get, I do all this stuff. Yes. And... I follow all the rules. Mm -hmm. I do exactly what my parents tell me to do. And then my younger sister comes in <laughs> and she gets lots of leniency. <laughs> all, the, all the credit, all the things. Yeah. And I know I've talked with many of you who have the same kind of feeling, you know, well, I do all of this I do all of these good things and all of this work and why should somebody who is not doing the same get more than me mm -hmm. and really relating to the the seeming unfairness yeah. of all of this um, don't I hear that a lot it's mm -hmm. not fair <laughs> right yeah we were talking um, before we went we went live about how um, it reminds me so Levi who's my oldest son he well he's he's very sensitive to start with but um, any time that we tell Joel mm -hmm. what a great job he's done on something or say, oh, wow, Joel, you did so great on this assignment at school or you're so creative, you know, you made this beautiful picture. Levi's response is always, well, aren't I creative? Don't you think that I did a good job? And even though we're never comparing the two of them, we're just praising Joel mm -hmm. for something he's done right. Levi internalizes this as a comparison. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly reminding him, like, Levi, we're just we're just taking a moment to recognize Joel and what he's done. Because I do this with you to. all the time. Yeah. Yes, we have to celebrate this. Yes. 
Um, just because you are, you know, you are trying to always be good doesn't mean that um, that we don't always praise others who are good too. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's a hard lesson for him to learn. It's gotten to the point where he said this yesterday. He said this, I think, yesterday when we said something to Joel, and I just looked at him and I said, Levi, and he said, I know, mommy, I know, I'm sorry, I remember. And he knew right away what I was gonna say, that it was not, you know, we're not comparing you, remember, you know, we love you too. But it's hard in the moment to hear that. It is hard to remember that. Um, And that's why it's just so, so, I mean, it's great to have those reminders around. Mm -hmm. It's so important to be able to say that to your children and to help them remember that this isn't a comparison. To be able to celebrate um, the uniqueness and gifts of everyone. Yes. And that when people are lost, we want to celebrate when they're found. Yeah. Um, the, the other piece in all of this, too, is that we reference back, so we have to set the stage always mm-hmm. when we read our scripture. You're like, yep, there's a lot where, of context. Yes, <laughs> what's the context? Where is this happening? Who is Jesus talking to? Mm-hmm. And so all of these, all of these stories are being told in the midst of grumbling by the Pharisees. And we're used to hearing this, right? The Pharisees are grumbling. They're complaining because this time Jesus is spending all of this time Mm -hmm. with sinners and tax collectors and um, the underlying message is not with us. Yeah. You know, here, here we are. We've been doing everything good and right and we're the Pharisees and the scribes and so we should get this extra special time. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus tells this story. And so there's, there's two parts in this um, that I think are really important because so often we, I, I'll speak for myself, forget that the Pharisees were not just these evil beings. Yeah. No, <laughs> they know? weren't. They, they were, were Jesus' were. contemporary. Yes. And they were doing good. They were. They might have made mistakes. Yeah. And there were a good number of them that misunderstood and maybe did stuff for show and They everything. were all like trying to figure out a way to live like God's word in the world. Mm-hmm. And and they had stayed. They stayed, they studied the scripture, yes. they studied the law, they did their best mm-hmm. to make sense of it. And what Jesus tells them, his message to them at the end of this passage is maybe a little different than what we often hear where he's he's really just kind of reprimanding he does a lot of reprimanding with the pharisees and comparing and saying okay look you guys got to change what you're doing but here the end reminder for them is my father says you are always with me everything that i have is yours and if this message can extend to the pharisees who who we know now as as really not getting everything that they're supposed to get, you know, in hindsight, you know, is hindsight is 2020, right? And so we know now that the Pharisees really didn't get a lot of stuff, but God still is saying, I'm with you. And what a great reminder for us and humbling, I think Mm -hmm. too, for those of us older children who sometimes, I know for me, fall into this pattern of thinking, ah, I'm doing everything right, and I need to be recognized. And yeah. then who do I sound like? Oh, yeah, like the Pharisees who think they're doing everything right and yeah. should be recognized. And that other people shouldn't be. Yes, yeah. yes. So um, so there are some really good lessons in here and reminders for us that no matter whether we are the lost son yes. or the one who has squandered things or whether we're the ones who have stayed home and done the work and or the start, father or the father who has um lost one of his sons one of his children uh, but we are all with god always and and everything that god has is ours yeah so beautiful ending to what can sometimes be a challenging and not always favorite story all right. Yeah. We should high five. That was a really we great should. One. Yeah. <laughs> Done. Okay, let's continue with our prayers. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we'll invite you to... Um, Offer your own prayers and thanksgiving silently, aloud, or by typing into Facebook. And join with us as we pray for those on our parish prayer list. For John, Howard, Stan, Hope, Frank, Kelly, Gabe, and Gio, Alan and Carol, Julius, Donna, Kathy, Dick, Delia, Martha, George, Judy and Denny, Nancy, Pam, Bill, Joe, Rob, Betty, Kevin, Kurt, Shannon, Ruth, Rick and Robert, Cindy, Carvel, Jessica, Daniel, Genevieve, Emily and Kim, Brian, Meredith, Pam, and Ruth Ann. We pray always for God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this world for peace in our nation and world, and for deployed people everywhere. We pray also for medical and emergency personnel and scientists working on solutions for COVID-19 and the continued successful distribution of vaccines. And we have a lot of people to give thanks for today and celebrate with. So happy birthday to Larry Britton, Greg Rennekamp, Brian O'Donohue, and Jared Castor. Happy, happy birthday. And then two anniversaries to celebrate, yep. Michael and April Improta and Lindsay and Robert McCarty. So happy anniversary, happy birthday. We pray God's blessing upon you that your day and your year to come will be joyful and filled with abundance. Amen. And now I don't think I have any announcements for you again, just as always keep reading your emails, following along with all that we have put out there. Um, anything you have to add? No. All right. We'll no. see Genevieve, maybe not this Sunday. Maybe she needs to take a little more of a break, but we'll see her in and out and um, keep praying for continued recovery. And uh, I guess I will say, yes, thank you everyone for your prayers. It has been immensely helpful. I have felt lifted the entire time. Thank you. This has been a wonderful community to be a part of during this time in my life. Excellent. Yes. Uh, and uh, now that the lawnmower is kicked in even louder, I think it's time for us to sign off. So let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. See you tomorrow. Bye, friends.